Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. You know, last summer, right after the Supreme Court issued their ruling in New York Pistol and Rifle Association, we saw this crazy phenomena, which was called the Post Bruin Meltdown. And that's where basically a bunch of very blue states went out and decided, well, you know what, the hell with that, we're gonna pass even more unconstitutional gun laws than the ones that the Supreme Court just threw out. Now, Massachusetts, the state that we get to talk about today, they didn't really have to do anything, you see, because they had stripped their citizens of their rights years earlier, okay? And that has now led to this second phenomenon, which we call the post-Bruin Enlightenment. And that is where, after we've had time to digest the holdings of New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin, we can go back and we can start applying those legal standards to other pre-existing law, and we go, hey, you know what? Maybe the court got that wrong the first time around. Well, Massachusetts, your assault weapon ban is now gonna be placed in the crosshair. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about how Massachusetts is going to have to defend its assault weapon ban again. Okay, so the state that we get to talk about today is Massachusetts, okay? And welcome to the Washington Gun Law Club, Massachusetts. Now, I have got to spend a lot of time in that great state, predominantly in Cambridge, predominantly during the month of July. The weather was always ungodly hot, but I absolutely love my time that I spent in the greater Boston area. I do not like Massachusetts gun laws, however, and if you are at all a fan of the Second Amendment or any of your civil liberties, Massachusetts will not be high on your hit list either. Now, as we know, we had a federal assault weapon ban that was passed many years ago and had a sunset provision that basically meant that the law came to an end in 2004. Now, the state of Massachusetts was none bit too happy about the sunset provision in the federal assault weapon ban. And so what they did is they threw some state legislation, basically declared all of those weapons to be copycat weapons, any potential assault weapon of what was previously on that list. That was done by then Attorney General Mara Healy. Oh, sound familiar? Yeah, because now she's the governor of Massachusetts. That basically allowed the state of Massachusetts to continue with an assault weapon ban until 2016 when Republican governor Mitt Romney signed one of the more sweeping assault weapon bans ever signed into legislation in the United States, certainly the most sweeping one ever signed by a Republican governor. Now, of course, that meant that there was a considerable amount of lawsuits, and so the lawsuits started flying around shortly after Governor Romney signed that assault weapon ban, and ultimately the courts found that Massachusetts had the right to ban assault weapons. How, you say? Well, because when they balanced the needs of society versus the infringement on the individual right and put their thumb on the scale the way we so frequently seen it done, yes, they determined that society had a greater need than the individual, that the Second Amendment was not absolute, they ignored things such as the common use test and upheld Massachusetts gun laws. Now, here's the problem, Massachusetts is that we have a new case out there called New York Pistol and Rifle Association, which basically took that two-part analysis. We're gonna weigh the societal needs versus the individual infringement here and threw it out on its ear, okay? And that two-part test, which was used not only to justify your assault weapon ban, but has been used to justify every other assault weapon ban, every other magazine ban nationwide, has now all been thrown out on its ear. And when we go back and we apply the proper legal test to what you, Massachusetts, have done to your residents, the problem for you is, is you have yourself an unconstitutional assault weapon ban. And I'm not alone in that opinion because the National Association for Gun Rights has filed a new lawsuit against the state of Massachusetts asking to re-challenge their assault weapon ban and to do so under the proper legal analysis. What is the proper legal analysis? Well, it actually doesn't have so much to do with the Bruin opinion as much as it has to do with the holdings of District of Columbia v. Heller because what we know from Justice Scalia's opinion in Heller is that the rule of law is the common use test, which means that if a firearm is in common use at the current time for lawful purposes, it cannot be banned. 
Put other ways, when we go back and we try to look at historical analogs and precedent for being able to ban firearms, the only historical precedent we find is for banning firearms which are considered both dangerous and unusual. Not dangerous or unusual, dangerous and unusual. And when we are talking about the most common sporting rifle in circulation for a multitude of lawful reasons, there is absolutely nothing uncommon about it, which is why with this new tightened up one part test, all of these assault weapon bans and magazine bans, their days are ultimately numbered. Massachusetts, I know you got very comfortable with your gun laws, but the bottom line is this, is that if the correct legal standard is applied to your assault weapon ban, it will cease to exist. Now, the president for the National Association of Gun Rights, Mr. Dudley Brown, uh, has issued a press release about the new suit that they have filed against the state of Massachusetts, and it reads as follows. The National Association for Gun Rights is suing the state of Massachusetts over their 1998 assault weapon ban, which was expanded in 2016. The Massachusetts law, which bans the sale and possession of most semi-automatic firearms and standard capacity magazines, was originally signed into law by then Republican Governor Mitt Romney. The first hearing took place at 9 a.m. on May 30th. Overseeing the case is Judge F. Dennis Saylor IV, who was appointed by President George W. Bush. Massachusetts has been directly violating the Second Amendment for decades. Under Bruin, there is no doubt in my mind the days of Romney's assault weapon ban are numbered. The National Association for Gun Rights will see to it that the rights of the people of Massachusetts are restored. As governor, Romney signed a gun ban so egregious that many Democrat lawmakers wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. More recently, as the junior senator from Utah, Romney has taken part in virtually every gun control compromise since taking office in 2019. The NAGR lawsuit argues that the Massachusetts gun ban is in violation of the 2022 Supreme Court decision handed down in a New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin case, which stated gun control laws must find their justification in the history, text, and tradition of the Second Amendment. This law bans firearms that are in common use throughout the United States, including the most popular rifle in America. Our members are chomping at the bit to snuff out semi-auto bans nationwide, and taking a hatchet to the Romney gun ban will be a tremendous feather in our cap. And it would appear that Mr. Brown and the good folks over at NAGR are not fans of now Senator Mitt Romney, okay? Once we get the pleadings on this, we're going to go ahead and share that. We'll do another video so that you guys can understand how the National Association of Gun Rights is attacking this. But I can tell you right now that it's going to be a very simple attack, which is let's just apply the case law, the current case law. And the current case law is going to be Bruin and predominantly Heller. We're gonna apply the common use test and this law is not going to survive. We will be sure to keep you posted. Massachusetts, welcome to the club of the Washington Gun Law Club. You only make it in here one of three ways. Do something totally awesome for your citizens. Uh, you guys are not in that club. Do something absolutely so horrible that we have to spread the news to the rest of the country so they can understand what stupidity may be coming their way. You did that years ago. Or that you are about to get your nose bloodied. And it is my prediction, Massachusetts, that you may end up getting your nose bloodied about this. Listen, you may have more questions about what's happening in Massachusetts, anywhere else around the country, or anything related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights. You guys should know how to contact Washington Gun Law by now, but if you don't, that's okay, because that information is right down there in the description box. In the meantime, I do want all of you to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.